Business, business, yes. Well, thank you all so much for uh, coming today. It is a great pleasure to see all of you all. I'd like to especially thank uh, Minister Albanese. Minister Albanese. I would also like to thank Minister Byron over here, Minister of Comments, of course. Lovely to see you, lovely to see you. Uh, then uh, Minister S uh, Sponge over there, lovely to see you, Minister Sponge. Been a long time, lovely to see you. And then, of course, Minister... Yes, anyway, uh, lovely to see you all today. Uh, I've come to, to, to you all today to talk about a rather pressing issue, which is the current state of CMB Extra. It is no secret that, of course, our recent endeavours into the uh, Harry Potter uh, series of video games has not been the most successful. I blame that on myself and, of course, also uh, you over there in the corner. Now watch yourself. I won't take kindly to that use of language in my room, meeting, room, office, area. You just watch yourself, mate. So this has uh, brought around a bit of a need to reshuffle our next series of organisations. Uh, and does anyone have any suggestions for future endeavours? Uh, now, now, Minister Sponge, I see you there with uh, you know, a very specific unit uh, there. I, I will protest that uh, at the moment. For you see, we've had a, a large uh, request for that unit, but I feel like uh, a further endeavour into the Harry Potter... All right, I'm sorry. All right, no, no, use to, no reason to use that type of language. I'm sorry. Or you're, I'm, no need to make fun of me like that. I'm sorry. All right? But I think my comment is... Please... Guys, all right, settle down, S settle down, all right? We're professionals here, all right? Hey, you've been the back, you're in the back. Stop it, stop, stop. I will, I will, I will have order, order. All those in favor of uh, Nick Toons Unite, uh, ra raise, raise your, your, whatever you have. Oh, you can't. Oh, right. Yep. All right. Um. Uh. All right. Fine. We'll, we'll we'll do it. All right. We'll do it. That make you happy. All right. We'll do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CMB Extra. Today, we will finally be reviewing Nicktoons Unite, by far the most requested video on the entire channel. People have been asking me to talk about this game for a very long time now, and I finally bought it. So let's give it a go. Now, growing up watching Rugrats, Jimmy Neutron, Spongebob, Hey Arnold, and a whole bunch of other Nickelodeon stuff, the thought of a TV special or game that brought them all together was literally the stuff dreams were made of for kids at that time. That was until THQ released Nicktoons Unite in 2005, developed by Blue Tongue Entertainment. Nicktoons Unite was the opportunity we'd all been waiting for, a proper story-based game that combines four of our favourite characters, their worlds and comedy into one singular experience. So now, nearly 15 years later, it's time to see if this game stands up today like so many Nickelodeon games from that era, or is it nothing more than a lifeless cash-in? Well, let's get started. The game follows along with the main four heroes, Timmy Turner, Jim Neutron, Spongebob and Danny Phantom, as they venture through their worlds to stop the evil syndicate a team-up of each show's respective villain. You battle your way through four main locations, each location generally having around three levels that carry you through the world and towards a boss fight. Generally, it's a pretty simplistic layout of levels and story, but it's all it really needs to be. Just don't expect anything substantial from this game in the story region. Now, if you followed along with some of the videos I've posted recently, specifically the five hour long video of me playing through the entirety of the game, you'll be pretty aware of my opinions around this game. And very little of my difficulties with the game came from its story, so let's move on. But I'll talk about the story a little bit later too. I will quickly mention before we begin, hold off on your comments till you've watched the entirety of the video, because I believe I'll address every point that someone might comment. So just hold off to see if I answer what you were going to say. If I don't, then feel free to comment anyway and I'll reply in the comments later. But I've tried my best to answer any of the issues or points people might bring up in the, throughout the whole video. So gameplay wise, you move through each level, switching between the main four whenever necessary. Each member has a main attack, Danny punches, Spongebob uses karate gloves, Jimmy uses some blaster thing, and Timmy uses Cosmo and Wanda as a star gun. 
They each have a series of additional abilities that are unlocked as the game progresses. SpongeBob has his main attack, but you can also throw out an airplane that turns into Doodle Bob and draws enemies towards it, which is only useful for like two parts of the game, but I've got to give them credit for using Doodle Bob in such a fun and creative way. He also has a Bubble Bomb ability as well. He can also suck up water and use it to rehydrate stuff. Jimmy has his blaster thing, his shrink ray, a flare gun, and a helmet. Okay, I literally used this once after it was given to me. Jimmy has one of the more interesting options. He has his star gun, he can freeze stuff, he then has his superhero alter ego with a robot hand that can pick up heavy stuff, and he also is a healer. Danny can punch, go through walls, glide a little bit, take over enemies, and has a ghost whale thing that breaks crystals and specific glass domes. While it is great that we have all these options, the game falters with them at nearly every opportunity. But let's quickly talk about the enemies. These honestly are some of the least inspired enemies I have ever seen in a video game. Nameless, characterless, goblin things that run around, throw fireballs at you, and ground slam. They're the same for the entire game except for sometimes they're wearing a helmet if they're underwater or a different colour to represent how many more hits they'll have to take. There are a few ghost enemies that can only be hit at specific times, which is nice to see some variation, but still the vast amount of time you'll walk into a room and boom, you go fight a swarm of the same enemies. Or if the game wants to be super annoying, they'll throw one of those plankton robot things that shoot bombs at you, which wouldn't be too bad, except that there are barely any invincibility frames when you get hit. Get ready to run towards these guys and get knocked over and over and over multiple times in a row without being able to do anything while you get swarmed by the little goblin guys. I will mention though in the last level there are bugs instead of goblins even though they more or less do the exact same thing except they jump around a little bit more. So the enemies are a total bore and whenever they introduce a new enemy that is remotely cool like these vacuum bosses they immediately beat you over the head with them by having you fight them over and over till you hate them as much as the rest of them. And this would all be fine if the abilities they gave you were at all interesting or impactful on the gameplay. Outside of a few moments, the abilities are only useful for say turning levers or getting through doorways. Which is fine, except for the fact that 99% of what you are doing in the game is spamming the one button to fight off this room of bad guys. The abilities they have here, such as Timmy's Ice, Jimmy's Flare, his Shrink Ray, Danny's Phase abilities and Scream are all perfectly made for not this game. They are all great ideas for a much more puzzle and exploration based game than this. In fact in many ways that seems like what they were originally wanted to make this game. Instead they decide to shoehorn in a level screen to improve your abilities and make you run through room after room after room of the same enemies that have no personality. Remember in Halo how even the grunts were interesting. They'd shout and call you names and run away. They were at least interesting, even if they could be killed by a strong breeze. The ability should have added a level of depth to the combat. It's fine to have these abilities, but you need to implement them drastically into the game. I used Doodle Bob twice in the 5 hour game. I used Jimmy's helmet thing once in the entire game. I took over bad guys with Danny's power twice in the game. They serve no purpose for the moment to moment gameplay and the level up page felt so unnecessary as I put so many coins into Spongebob and the most difference I could feel that he hit a bit faster and hit a bit harder. Compare that to the movie game where the level up page there actually made a dramatic difference to the gameplay and the way the abilities worked and looked. I should also point out that Spongebob and Timmy are more or less the only good characters in the game. Spongebob can attack faster and harder than Danny and his water ability is utilised way more and Timmy's star shooter and superhero powers outweigh all of Jimmy's whose blaster is so slow and uses shrink rate so sparingly it's barely useful. All in all the gameplay is a total and complete bore. I had literally no fun with the minute to minute gameplay and it was an absolute slog. Now I'm going to say something that will probably get me in a bit of trouble here but I had more fun playing Plankton's Robotic Revenge. I just did. In fact this game is most similar in fact to that game in nearly every way from the over repeating of enemies to even its camera angle. But hey at least in that game the upgrades to your gun 
happen way quicker and has the decency to be over quicker. Also, if anyone in the comments is currently writing, it's a kid's game, you're being too tough on it. And my reply to that will be, this isn't okay. There are so many better Nickelodeon games out there. Battle for Boogie Bottom, Creature from the Krusty Krab, Attack of the Twonkies, all great games that won't bore kids to death. Just because it's a kid's game doesn't let it off the hook when other kid's games, not even that, other kid's games that were coming out around the same time are so much better in every way. This is just bad game design. And kids, frankly, deserve a funner game. Okay, so now we're getting into the next big issue. The boss battles. I hated every last one of them. There is one here that specifically took me 30 minutes to work out what I was doing wrong. And guess what? I wasn't wrong. I've been doing the right thing. It just took me ages to actually beat the boss. I will quickly mention outside of scripting stuff, the reason why it took me 30 minutes to complete is because the game was so broken that I thought I must be doing it wrong. When in reality, the boss's hitbox was just a bit too high for my main character, so Timmy's attacks, to actually register every time. So one in every 10 shots or five shots would actually connect. So I was sure I was doing something wrong, but no, that's the way it's designed. The hitbox is too high for the character's aim. So you randomly hit him. There is no like skill or anything like that. You just have to hope that you make contact because you can't jump and shoot. So it's just completely random. And I thought I was doing it wrong the entire time. And I will mention that I didn't finish the game. I quit playing after losing to the flea boss, which is the second last boss of the game in the last area, which reset me back an hour of the level and I could not be bothered to push myself back through all that boring gameplay to continue on. I will say though, the boss battles are the areas of the game that utilize the abilities best in combat. Using bombs or Timmy's ice powers, they utilize the varied abilities best out of the entire game. It's just a shame they aren't very fun. Okay, well, how about level design? That is definitely where this game improves on Plankton's Heroic Revenge. The level design here is way better than all of that, really. Each of the four main worlds has a distinct art style, tone, and color palette, helped greatly by the fact that each world is from a completely different show. Every map and location is enjoyable and does the show well, except the Jimmy Neutron one, which is an absolute disappointment and a real missed opportunity. Danny's is probably the most different and interesting of the bunch because of all the very locations you go to, quickly followed up by Fairy World. For the most part, you're just moving through different rooms, finding five of something to move on or clearing the room of enemies. But it still captures the shows. Graphically, it is lacking a lot. Textures are pretty low quality, and what the hell is wrong with Jimmy? And why does Danny look so flat? But it's all helped by the fact that it's a very stylized game. While the level design is an improvement, I just wish I was doing something more interesting in them. There are a handful of really weird design choices though, like pathways that lead nowhere, despite having a path of coins lead you down it. It's like they're just trying to waste your time. Also, the fixed camera makes it all even more difficult. As I mentioned before though, while the levels do look different and have some good parts, there are areas of the game where you're just moving from room to room, fighting enemies, and it gets really boring. Once again, the level design could have benefited greatly from some additional puzzle solving elements. Well, now that we're talking about presentation, we should talk about music. Uh, what music? This music is literally so dull and uninteresting. For the entire five hours of playing, I can't even think of a single tune or anything from it. It's completely forgettable and doesn't even match the situation. Fairy World has been overtaken by a madman who is sucking its power away to help build a doomsday device and this is the best music choice. Free at last. This. After listening to the music on its own just on YouTube and all that type of stuff, it's not that bad. It's quite, you know, it's alright but it's very dull and more or less Elevator music is the best description for it, and it's just way too quiet in the game. Also, while we're talking about audio, the general audio quality here is really quite bad. Mostly sound effects. They sound really rough and bit crushed, and are difficult on the ears. For the most part, the audio of the main four is still good quality. 
But I will mention not all of the game is voice acted. For some weird reason, like 10% of the game is in silent subtitles, and I have no idea why. It's really weird because it happens very rarely, but it's still there. Seems like they had all the lines recorded, then decided they need to add more context or say something else, and didn't have the time or money to bring anyone back in to record and mix it. On that note, let's talk about the characters and the combination of all these shows. Now, for the most part, they are good. Timmy and Jimmy remembering each other from the Power Hours is fantastic. But where are the characters? All these really are are one-note, simplified versions of the characters. Sure, Jimmy and Timmy remembering the Power Hours is great, but where is them bantering with each other like they did in those specials? The closest we come is one conversation in Fairy World where Jimmy calls them all holograms. He doesn't believe in fairies while standing next to a talking sponge and a ghost. Also, as someone who has never watched Danny Phantom or Fairly Old Parents, I really got no sense of their characters from this game, outside of Timmy's occasional one-liners. The game doesn't properly represent and transition these characters into the setting. While this stuff is in no way necessary to make a great game, when the only real selling factor of the game is the fact that all of these characters are in a game together, you would kind of expect, you know, the characters to be in it. They, just like most of the game, are lacking. I don't need these massive conversations between them. I just need little one-liners or short conversations as we run from room to room. Timmy making fun of Jimmy's head. SpongeBob making a joke about not having his land legs yet as he falls off something. Those types of little interactions and moments of character-based comedy would have made it feel like I was actually playing as these characters and going on a journey with them. Lastly, can I mention how awful the frame rate is in this game? Literally, have more than three enemies on screen at once, and it's 15 frames per second. It is awful. So those are my thoughts on Nicktoons Unite. I will mention, though, that I played this all single player. It would most definitely be more fun with more people, but that is no credit to the game. Everything is funner with friends. Chewing on a rock would be funner if your friends were doing it too. And as it has a single player option, that option must be as fulfilling as any other. I'm interested as to how the rest of the series will improve or change. I plan on covering each and every one, and I really hope that they do improve and grow as a series. In comparison with all other Nickelodeon games, Nicktoons Unite is extremely lacking in the gameplay department. It is a complete bore from start to finish, and the characters are relatively empty, while the level design is better and the art direction is great, the music does little to help set the mood of the situation. And as a whole, the game comes off feeling rushed and like a great missed opportunity to be sure. I was really hoping to love this game, but sadly, it's mediocre at its best points and just bad for the majority. The only way I could ever consider this to be a good game if I was completely blinded by nostalgia or for some reason absolutely loved doing the exact same thing for five hours in a row. I really don't understand the call for this of all Nickelodeon games to be remastered like Battle for Kingy Bottom. It doesn't deserve it, and it's one of the worst I've played in years. And there are countless others that actually hold up to this day that deserve to be remade and given to a new generation. This in many ways has already been remade. It was released only a few years ago, called Plankton's Robotic Revenge. Funny how without nostalgia, everyone agrees that that game is really bad. Yet this one gets a pass because it was my childhood. I don't want to discredit anyone's emotional connection with this game. I love the movie game because I played it when I was a kid. But I know and understand that it is inherently a worse game than Battle for Guinea Bottom. It doesn't change how much I love it, but the same needs to be for this game. You can love it, that's fine, but you've got to understand its shortcomings. And if you're going to be so forgiving of this game, it kind of discredits your same ability to turn around and hate on the Activision games. I'm not defending those games either. I think they're bad, but they have a very similar DNA and issues, which makes this comparison possible. Once again, I don't want to upset or offend anyone who absolutely loves this game. I just want those people who blindly love it to actually analyze the game completely. Be harsh on it. 
be as harsh on it as we are other Nickelodeon games we don't like. Because if you believe a game is good, be harsh on it, analyse it, because the best games can stand up to that type of analysis and still come out great. Don't just be content with being biased due to your nostalgia. Look at all of these games critically because it was my childhood just isn't going to cut it if we want to measure the value and worth of these games. We don't talk very much anymore. Well, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I didn't upset any extremely nostalgia blind fans out there. I can honestly say I came at this game with no prior expectations or desires to call it a bad game. I just wanted to make a good video because I've been asked to play this game. I gave it the best shot I could and these are my honest opinions backed up by my very painful five hour experience which you can watch all of by clicking here and you can also check out one of my other videos here. Thank you very so much for watching and I'll see you all next video. Bye bye. Mwah!